Good morning, everybody, and welcome. Thank you to our officer and to my co-pilot for today, Karim. It is uh, wonderful to be here. Today, I'm doing a portion of a presentation called Five Ways to Massive Profits. So I'm doing the first portion today, and my colleague, business coach Bert, will continue with it next week, Monday. So do tune in. And our question to you today is, what is keeping your business from peak performance? So as Karim mentioned, just a gentle reminder for those of you who haven't completed the annual plumbing industry survey, to hop on over to alpsa.org after the webinar presentations and earn your one CBD credit point. A little bit about myself. My name is Belinda. I've got over 15 years experience in marketing and business development. I've worked in various sectors uh, throughout my career, particularly within the engineering, aviation, education, training and uh, industries, and more recently within the biometrics and information technology industries. And I love developing marketing strategies that work and most important, importantly, implementing those strategies going forward. So what does Action Coach do in a nutshell? Well, Action Coach inspires, helps business owners like you grow your business with confidence through a framework of tried and tested uh, strategies, methodologies, and systems. In doing so, you will grow your business uh, bottom line and profitability, and you also create methods massive growth in your lifestyle and the confidence to run your business going forward. We also assist business owners in managing their time so that you find the time to spend with the most important people in your life. But most importantly, you find the time to start working on your business and not just in your business like a regular employee. So today we are going to reward your time by focusing on the sales and marketing aspects of your business. And we're gonna provide you with some of the easiest, simplest and fastest ways to increase your income. So I'm going to uh, guide you through a few examples going forward. But before we do, Karim, can you please put up the first question? So the question is, marketing is traditionally seen as the first option in investment, second option in expense, third option something you do if you have time. Okay, so we have 69% uh, that said in investment, 27% that said in expense, and 4% said something you do if you have time. Marketing is generally seen as an expense. So traditionally, some people see sales and marketing as an expense. And in essence, in reality, sometimes it can be seen as true because eight out of 10 ads normally fail. So you spend a lot of money creating perfect ads and eight out of 10 people fail to generate leads and only two out of 10 ads are successful. So why is this? So our view is indeed that sales and marketing is an investment because for every round out, more rand should come in. So you need to come up with your gener uh, lead generation tactics. So why is this true for some businesses and not others? Well, firstly, there's two sides to marketing. First is the acquisition cost. So if you invested 300 rand in advertising and got 10 customers or 10 uh, leads, which you converted into customers, um, you've already paid 30 rand for each customer. So you've, in essence, spent money to buy customers. So we need to formulate strategies and to figure it out ways and how we can reduce your acquisition costs going forward, up the lead generation as well as the conversion rate. And one of the ways you can do that is by looking at the lifetime value of your customer. So if your customer spend is on average 550 Rand over a period of six years, that is 3,300 Rand in revenue generated to you. And the question I pose to you today is, how can you increase that? What strategies can you do in your business to increase the lifetime value of your customer going forward? So today I'd like to talk to you about uh, marketing strategies that will cost your business nothing to implement. Most of you are already doing some of it or are 
unaware that you're doing it at the moment. And if it's working for you, I do uh, encourage you to actually for formulate strategies around what's working for you and what's not working uh, for you. So this extract comes from one of our bootcamp sessions, which we are busy running for our clients. It's a value add session to them and they are implementing what they learn as they go along. So Kareem, can I ask you to please put up question number two? Does your business have a set marketing budget and plan? First option, yes. Second option, no. Third option, depends on my cash flow and time availability. And fourth option, only in emergencies. I'll just give the attendees a few seconds to answer. Okay, there we go. So 23% said yes, 41% said no, 35% said depends on my cash flow and time availability, and 1% said only in emergencies. Okay, the answer should be yes. Depending on, that is why marketing planning is very important and depending on your budget and what campaigns you want to do, it is very important that you have a marketing budget so that it's not seen as an expense, it's seen as an investment and you can forecast and measure your return on investment accurately. All right, let's get into the six strategies that will cost your business nothing. So we're going to dive into referrals. Okay, so referrals are very important and it's very important that you have a referral strategy in place and not just hope and pray that people are going to send you referrals to your business. In order to have a referral strategy, there's two things which you must do. You must be great at what you do from a service delivery perspective, from a um, uh, uh, your project management perspective, from a time perspective, and you mustn't be afraid to ask for uh, referrals. Indeed, you need to thank the referring party when you do receive referrals. It's out of common courtesy, it's out of relationship building, and it ensures repeat referrals going forward. You need to keep the referral party updated on the outcome. This is very important from a reputational point of view because not only is your reputation affected by the service that you provide, but it also affects the referral party's reputation going forward. For instance, if somebody refers me to a mechanic and I experience uh, like bad service delivery, I pay triple the amount I was supposed to be paying, it was just a very terrible experience for me. I won't be going back to that mechanic and I definitely won't be asking that person for any more referrals going forward. So it does affect their reputation. If you're not getting referrals, you need to ask yourself why. Referrals is a, a form of word of mouth marketing and it should indeed be utilized going forward. It costs you nothing, simple plans, simple templates, and you can implement it in the quickest form possible. Depending on the nature of the referral or the amount of revenue generated from the referral, you can consider giving the uh, referral party a gift or a reward as a thank you, just to show that they add value to you as a client and also add value to your business going forward. Perfect. So the next question is up. The question is, how often should you engage with your prospects? So the options are once a week, at least once a month, quarterly, as and when I have time, hardly ever. 27% said once a week, 51% said at least once a month, 8% said quarterly, 9% said as and when I have time, and 4% said hardly ever. Yay, the 51% of you were correct. It's at least once a month, well done. Okay, so, what is an elevator pitch? So basically, in a nutshell, it's a brief persuasive line or sentence or speech that you use in order to spark interest about what you and your business does for people. So imagine you're at the bottom floor of a building, somebody gets in with you, you're both traveling to the seventh floor, you've got a first impression to make, and normally first impressions are generated within 15 seconds. So you need to tell a person how you add value to their lives or what problems you solve. So in a nutshell, 
30 to 60 seconds. You don't need to get technical. It's just something that you do. And you can use this elevator approach as a tagline going forward in all your written communication as well. You can put it on your business cards. You can put it on your posters, et cetera, et cetera. But have a great elevator pitch. You, it's something simple, but it's something so effective. Okay. Next one. The slide doesn't want to change. Okay, so an example of my elevator pitch would be I work with entrepreneurs and business owners to grow themselves and their businesses to their full potential because I believe businesses should give you more life. Please don't die. Okay, the second one um, strategy is email marketing. So basically now there's two types of email databases. Warm is your existing database and it's the communication which your existing customers and your audience receive. They know you and uh, they, they, they engage with your communication. They open up your emails. They respond to your emails, etc. The second one is cold. So that is when you're actually building your database, when you have a campaign, or if you want to break into a new target market and you start building your database. Uh, the objective here is to try and change the cold database into a warm database and keep on doing that. So it's a cycle. So you you need to keep your audience engaged with you as you go along. So you need to be aggressive with building your database and set a goal monthly about how much you want your database to grow by. That's including the unsubscribes, excluding the people that subscribe to you, uh, including the campaigns that you're building going forward. So for uh, email databasing, it's recommended that you use a CRM. If your database is small, Excel spreadsheets are still fine, but please bear in mind it's not professional. There's a lot of open source um, CRM software out there that is for free, but obviously the functionality is limited. So ensure that uh, your CRM system will, will meet your business needs. Okay. Unfortunately, South Africa has one of the highest spam cultures in the world uh, with regards to emailers, as well as SMSs and telemarketing. So it's advisable not to spam your customers three to four times a week, please. You'll receive complaints. So keep your emailers <clears throat> uh, going out not, uh, uh, not more, at least once a month. Obviously, there are some exceptions to the rule, especially if you're running a competition or if there's another campaign that you would like to promote. Don't just advertise, also educate and communicate, because with, within educating or communicating, you remain more memorable, and people ju just don't think that you're out to get their blood. Okay, Have a unique call to action with an offer. Don't say, learn more or inquire now. So, uh, you need to entice people to want to contact you. So sign up now, book your qu a free uh, call out today, etc., etc. You need to uh, have some excitement with your offer. The quality of the database is the utmost importance. Um, you do not want to target um, uh, the wrong target market because then that will just be a waste of time and effort and revenue in the long run. So target copy and offer focus. Be warm, relatable, be consistent and regular. Uh, speak your customer's language. Um, avoid jargon or acronyms which the customer won't understand. If you're targeting uh, wives to try and get their husbands to buy more or to replace the geezers, etc., relate more to them and speak in their language and be also maintain the consistency and the um, and be regular with the message. Our third free strategy is just uh, strategic alliances. As the saying goes, it's not what you know in life that gets you places; it's who you know. So identify other businesses who have the same target audience, uh, who are highly strategic and aligned towards similar goals, such as your business. It must also be a two-way street and mutually beneficial. So it's it's it must be a give and take and not just a give, give, give. There must always be something in it for you. You stay in regular contact with your strategic alliance. You normally uh, come up with a referral statement or even have it uh, written down with regards to quotes and proposals going forward. 
a way of getting strategic alliances, which can also be seen as another strategy, but I've combined the two here, is to reconnect with your own client base because they have no people within their network who you can do business with. It's the typical rule of six degrees of separation. You are only six people away from getting to the correct contact person who you want to be involved with. So focus on your past customers and clients because they know, like, and trust you. They are a great source of referrals and repeat business as well. Where possible, make your interactions personal, email, phone call, WhatsApp, and keep in touch. It's important to keep that relationship going. If you only contact them when you want business or if you need business or if you need help, they're going to start avoiding you and you want to avoid that situation. So strategic alliance examples. What type of, of businesses would be good strategic alliances for the following businesses? So home builder, renovator. Think of it like a mind map. You've got a house in the middle. What elements or, or, or what industries are needed in order to build a house? So your basic strategic alliances would be architects, plumbers, electricians, interior designers, construction workers um, going forward. Alarm companies would be burglar guard, manufacturer, insurance broker, locksmith, virtual PA, accountant, bookkeepers, admin people and shared office landlords that can supply them with business. Social media. Okay. Now this is very important. Gone are the days where it was just mix it or MySpace. Now everybody knows about Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, YouTube, Pinterest, most recently TikTok, which I find very funny, but okay, great. So our advice to you is to create original informative content and share and post it to Facebook. Be unique in your approach. Just because everybody else is doing something doesn't mean to say that, that, you, that you can do it. Tweak it according to what you need to do. Um, the plumbers in America are gaining more customers because the wives in the businesses are busy uh, taking on a humorous note of, of, of being the wife of the plumber and, and, and relaying messages and creating posters of, of, of how their, da their daily lives are affected by, the, by their husband's shenanigans. And I chuckled when I did some research on it. It's, it's very original. So with Facebook, it's not a great lead generator for business to business, but it is a great lead generator for business to clients. So that is where your average clients, your everyday people are based. So make sure that you are visible on Facebook and it's a good opportunity to get your name out there for brand awareness purposes. Please have a professional uh, Facebook business page and separate it from your personal profile because you don't want people associating your business with your personal profile. Just now you post some sensitive content and some people might get offended to that. LinkedIn is also very great and I urge people to join the platform uh, uh, because uh, you can reap so many benefits from this platform. It's great for making business contacts. You can um, follow company pages, you can connect with them in, in, in your network, but you can also research, you can search for contact names and contacts per position in order to build up that database which you want to build up. And so it's threefold. So you're getting there, you're getting busy, but then what you post on Facebook, you can also copy over and post to LinkedIn. So just make sure that there's uniformity in your look and feel as well as in your posts. So create original informative content and share and post on your WhatsApp groups and your Facebook groups. It could be weekly ads or posts. People are very visual. So, um, so it, it's advisable that if you do not know how to create posters, there's lots of free online um, tools which you can use like canva.com. It's very user friendly. I use it in my ads and it works like a bomb for me. Instagram is becoming more important, not only for photographs, but also for posters and short videos. And um, depending on the generations, uh, gaps, millennials and Generation Z and whatnot prefer Instagram over other social media platforms. So it's advisable to choose one or two social media platforms and stick with it 
um, don't try to focus on them all. Just identify one to three and see what works for you. Google My Business is very important, and I see many people overlooking the importance of Google My Business. Gone are the days of the yellow pages telephone directory. Now, when people need something, they're on their mobile devices, and they'll say, plumbers near me, or Giza repair near me, Giza, Giza installation near me, and then up pops Google Maps with a list of all the businesses. Make sure you're on there. When they Google you directly, make sure Google My Business has got a lot of reviews and content and directions and some posters on there. It is very important. If people can't find you within the first two pages of Google, you're lost. I'm not a big fan of Twitter. It's very controversial and very uh, much open for misinterpretation. And I feel that it's for politicians. Tip, always use hashtags or tag people and be consistent in your messaging and also post regularly. With social media, it's great. You don't have to do it once a month. Uh, I recommend doing at least a minimum of twice per week. Testimonial marketing. Okay, the principle of social proof. Okay, it's so it's highly effective, but it's un, it's an underutilized lead generation strategy. So my question to you today is: Which of these are the most important? What we say we do, what we do, or what others say we do? Remember, word of mouth marketing can make or break you. It's the same as the referral strategies. You can use test testimonial marketing with, in combination with referral strategies. Okay, so how do you do testimonial marketing? Well, there's two ways which you can do it. It's either written or it's on video. And the nice thing about this is that the, this, this content is timeless. So you can always reuse your testimonials depending on which campaigns, no matter what the year, you can use it on social media, you can use it on your website, your company profile, your emailers, going forward, testimonials are very versatile in getting the message out there. So here are some tips for getting testimonials written. Ask the client if they wouldn't mind giving you a written testimonial for your marketing. Send them a sample of one or send them a, a, a little template of questions which they need to answer. And always follow up and ask when you can expect them back. Don't harm them too much because your clients are just as busy as you. Um, and also, don't avoid long-winded testimonials. Short, sweet, and to the point. Video marketing is also extremely popular and important nowadays. I'm a YouTube addict myself. Uh, so video and online streaming accounts for 75% of the internet traffic today. How many people are busy commuting and are on their mobile devices or tablets or whatnot looking at various videos? I see a lot on Chain. So use of videos to promote, educate, and train. Also, it's a great platform to demonstrate the products, particularly if you're busy with an installation or if you see a problem and you don't think people will believe what you've just seen. Take a short little video. Your phone's got a great camera. Uh, first, ask your client if you can do it, if you're on the client's premises, and then post it to your Facebook page. It just makes you more relatable to other people. It's great for testimonial purposes, and you can start your own YouTube channel, but then you can also repost it to the other social media channels. You can use it in your emailers, and you can also use it on your website going forward, just to explain what you do in a nutshell. So uh, before I quote, um, can we do the last question, please? The question is, which of the following marketing strategies should you be working on? Number one, website, own database via email marketing, social media platforms like Facebook, word of mouth, or all of the above. Okay, so 6% said website, 3% said own database via email marketing, 13% said social media platforms, 11% said word of mouth, and 68% said all of the above. Well done to the 68% of you. Woohoo! Okay, back to controls. So, uh, a word of advice to you is always try and run two to three strategies congruently. Find out what works for your business and then use those strategies because if one doesn't 
pick up momentum, you can always use another one. So just to quote Jim Rohn, never wish your life were easier, wish that you were better, work harder on yourself than what you do on your job. And then to quote my colleague, business coach uh, Bird, your journey began with a dream, you built and grew your business, now you owe it to yourself to take it to the next level. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really hope you enjoyed the presentation.